Chapter 7 Work, Energy, and Power This video is brought to you by Ace with Dennis. Now, learning can be smart, not hard. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell notification button to stop missing out free lessons from me. Work done W Work done W on an object is defined as the product of force F acting on the object and distance traveled S by the object in the direction of the force. The formula for work done is W equals F times S. This diagram illustrates how to use this formula. Let's say this is an object. It is pulled by a force F and it moves to a new location. And this is the distance traveled S. Work done is a scalar quantity. The SI unit for work done is joules or symbol is J. If someone pushes a wall and the wall does not move, no work is done because there is no distance traveled. When S is 0, W is 0. What is energy? Energy, E, is the ability to do work. Energy is a scalar quantity. The SI unit for energy is Joule, symbol J. There are nine common types of energy. The first one is gravitational potential energy. It is energy stored by objects that are in high places. 2. Kinetic energy is energy processed by moving objects. 3. Thermal energy is internal energy that is responsible for the temperature of an object. 4. Solar or light energy is the energy that is produced by illuminating object. 5. Sound energy is the energy that is caused by vibrating objects. 6. Electrical energy is the energy that is caused by moving electrical charges. 7. Nuclear energy is the energy released from atoms either by nuclear fusion or nuclear fission. 8. Elastic potential energy is the energy stored as a result of applying a force to deform an elastic object. 9. Chemical potential energy is the energy that can be stored and released chemically, for example, food, batteries, or fuel. Gravitational potential energy, GPE. Gravitational potential energy is the energy possessed by an object due to its position in a gravitational field. For example, this is an object with a mass m. It has a weight mg and a height h. We know that the work done formula W equals fs. Hence, GPE is MGH. So, when it is released, it can move down to the ground. When the H is 0, the GPE is 0. Kinetic energy, KE. Kinetic energy is the energy possessed by an object due to its motion. This is an object with a mass of m. Initially, the speed is zero. So when it is forced mf equals to ma, pulling this mass, it is moving to this direction. And there is a distance traveled s. And at the final speed, it is a v. So work done. W is equals Fs, hence Ke equals Ma times S, and we know that V square equals to U square plus 2As, 
Hence, s is v squared minus u squared over 2a. When u equals to 0, the s becomes v squared over 2a. Therefore, kinetic energy becomes ma times v squared over 2a. And we can cancel the a. At the end, we get kinetic energy formula equals half mv squared. So when the mass has a speed, initial speed v1, and it is traveled with a force equals ma, and it travels at a distance s, and its final speed is v2, the change in ke equals ke2 minus ke1. Hence equals half mv2 squared minus half mv1 squared. Gp and ke are known as mechanical energy. Principle of conservation of energy. The principle of conservation of energy states that the total amount of energy is in an isolated system is constant. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can be converted from one form to another. So this is an isolated system. If we have energy input, this isolated system can transform the energy input into useful energy output and waste energy. Hence, energy input will be equals useful energy output plus waste energy. Now, let's look at this example on principle of conservation of energy. A toy car with a mass of 5 kilograms is climbing up a slope with an initial speed of 20 meters per second. So this diagram illustrates the problem. When it reaches the top, its speed has reduced to 18 meters per second. So final speed 18 meters per second. Calculate the gravitational potential energy gain, the change in kinetic energy, work done against friction, and finally, frictional force along the slope. You can pause the video and try to answer the question yourself. Now, let's look at the solution. GPE equals MGH. Hence, for this case, it's 5 times 10 times 3, and we get 150 joules. For B, this is the change of Ke equals Ke1 minus Ke2. Therefore, it is half times 5 times 20 squared minus half times 5 times 18 squared. So at the end, we'll get 190 joules. C. So change in Ke equals GPE plus work done against friction. Hence, work done against friction equals to change in Ke minus GPE. Therefore, it is 190 minus 150, we get 40 joules. Lastly, we want to find the distance of AC. Based on the Pythagoras theorem, it will be equal to square root of AB square plus VC square. Then we get 4 square plus 3 square, then we square root it. The answer is 5 meters. Therefore, work done again friction equals friction times AC. And we can get the force, the frictional force is work done against friction over AC which is 40 divided by 5, and it is 8 newtons. So, let's look at ideal pendulum in principle of conservation of energy. Let's say this bulb is released at point A. The initial speed is 0. The GP1 is the maximum. KE1 is 0, because there is no speed. So, when it is released, it will swing to point B. 
So there is a perpendicular height h. Hence, GP1 will be equals mgh. So when it is at point B, the speed is maximum. GP will be 0 because the height is 0. For KE, it will be maximum because the speed is maximum. So it is equal to GP1 because all the GP1 has been converted into KE. Now, it swings to point C. At this point, the speed is 0. GPE is equal to maximum. And it is equal to GPE 1. Because they are at the same height. KE will be 0 because the speed is 0. We can say that all kinetic energy has been converted to gravitational potential energy. Pendulum is momentarily at rest before it swings back to B, then A. Let's look at this example. A pendulum is released from rest at point A. It swings past point B, which is the lowest point, 5 cm below point A, and reaches point C, which is horizontal level with point A. So it is exactly the same diagram. Assume that G is 10 meters per second square and there is no energy lost. Calculate the speed of pendulum at point B. In practical, the pendulum does not reach point C. Why? You can pause the video and try to answer this question yourself. Now let's look at the solution. Based on the principle of conservation of energy, all GPE at point A has been converted to KE at point B. Therefore, gain in KE equals loss in GPE, which is half mv square equals mgh, and we can cancel the m, we get v equals to square root of 2 gh, and we substitute the value will get V equals 1 meters per second. B. In practical, there is air resistance when the pendulum swings. Some energy is converted to heat due to the air resistance, which is waste energy. Power. Power is the rate of work done or the rate of energy conversion. Hence, to calculate power, Power equals work done over time taken, or W over T. Or, power equals energy conversion over time taken, E over T. The SI unit for power is Watt, symbol W. Let's look at the following case. You want to reach the top of a 50-story high building. There are two ways to do it. Either you climb up with a rope, or you climb up with staircase. Which one is more tiring? Which one takes longer time to reach the top? Does it mean it takes more energy or power? So, both require the same amount of energy at the height as the height is the same. Hence, work done is the same. Climbing up with a rope reaches the top of the building faster, but is more tiring because it draws energy at a shorter period of time. Hence, the rate of energy which is power is greater. Climbing up with staircase reaches the top of the building slower, but is less tiring because it draws energy at the longer period of time. Hence, the rate of energy, which is power, is lower. Note, power is inversely proportional to time. 
but energy is independent to time. Efficiency In practice, we want to know how efficient an isolated system is to convert energy input into useful energy output. Ideally, we want a 100% efficient system, which means all energy input has been converted into useful energy output. Let's look at the model again. This is an isolated system. We have input energy, EI, an isolated system converts input energy into useful energy output, EO. However, in real life, this will not happen as we know there is always waste energy. Hence, waste energy, EW. Therefore, we need to calculate the efficiency of the system with the following formula. Efficiency epsilon equals E out over E in, where E out equals E in minus E waste. Based on the formula, efficiency is defined as the ratio of useful energy output to energy input. And efficiency has no unit. Very often we want, we express efficiency in percentage. Therefore, we can times 100%. If we divide both useful output energy and input energy with time t, the formula will become efficiency equals E up over E i divided by t divided by t and we'll get p out over p in, where p out equals p in minus p waste. Based on the formula, efficiency can also be defined as the ratio of useful power output to power input. If the efficiency is expressed in percentage, we just need to multiply with 100%. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Do you have any question or doubts to ask? Feel free to write down in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Do you like this video? Please don't forget to like it and share it. Alternatively, you can also enroll this full revision course at Udemy. At Udemy. You can track your learning more effectively, download my notes in printable PDF form, take a summative quiz at the end of each chapter, get your first-hand updated contents from me, get quicker response from me, and many more. You can get all these benefits at a very affordable price. It is one-time payment no recurring fees, no hidden costs. This saves you thousands of dollars on expensive tuition fees and revision crash courses. And most importantly, your precious time. Finally, you can do your revision anytime you like, anywhere you prefer. All is available within your fingertips. Check out the description below this video and click on the enrollment link to register the course at discounted price. Alright, until then, see you in the next video. Have a great day ahead.